hard it is to set it off. Well, I didn't have to push very hard. Above the trap with blood. This dang bee won't leave me alone. I don't know how in the world I'm gonna get this thing out of here. Go in, get the meat, might turn around, back up, what have you. So you, you quadruple your chances of catching a cast. What do I have? Oh yeah, bobcat. Heck yeah, got a good cat. All right, thought I'd do something a little bit different today. Um, I went and set four traps yesterday, leg hold traps for bobcats. I got a farmer who lives a few miles out of town that's having some trouble with uh, bobcats and coyotes and different things getting his uh, goats and his sheep. So I set four traps and I thought about doing a video yesterday about setting them, but I was kind of in a hurry, so I just set everything out. And it's about nine o'clock in the morning. I just left the house and I'm on uh, trap number one. And I seen something moving right away. I thought, shoot, I'll grab the camera. So anyway, looks like I got a coon in here. But uh, today I'm gonna go and uh, maybe video some of the animals that I caught today and actually go over how I set the traps, what I do, what I use for bait, and all that good stuff. So stick with me, here we go. All right, so I told you guys I'd go over all the, uh, the bare essentials basically of what it takes to uh, catch bobcats, coyotes, what have you. So starting out here, I've got a, a Minnesota brand trap. It's just, a, it's just a double cool spring leg trap. It's a 550 size. Nothing too special about it. One thing that I will cover real quick is I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but on the very tip, it has a uh, pre-cut uh, edge in it. And when you set that, I'm not gonna actually set it in front right here, but when you set this thing and you lift that pan up, as you push down, and you push all, when you push down that pan, click right there and it's set into place. That way the next time something touches it, then it, that's when it'll fire and, and catch whatever you're after. So that's the, that's the traps that I use. These are um, 12 inch, uh, I believe they're called earth anchors. You can order them online. I could put a link in the description below. And so that brings me to the second item that I make sure I always have in my bucket with me. And uh, this is just a big thick piece of rebar. I'm gonna say it's half inch rebar. And I actually ground down the end of it so that it'll fit inside of these earth anchors. Um, depending on the soil that you have, you know, if you have maybe say like a sandy type soil or loose soil, you might want to go with like a 16 inch earth anchor where you can drive it in the ground more. So basically you just drive this in the ground straight in and once you're in and you pull up on the trap, this thing turns and pivots and, and anchors itself in the ground. So, so start out with the trap. Here's a uh, <clears throat> piece of rebar to actually drive it in the ground with. I also carry a hammer in the, in the uh, bucket that I carry with me. Uh, basically, it serves two purposes. I can use the claw in to actually dig the hole out to where I set my traps in the ground, and then I can also drive that uh, earth anchor in the ground with the actual hammer end. Uh, also, always carry a, a roll of string and use trot line cord, wire, whatever uh, you got laying around the house. Like I said, this is just very essential type stuff just to get a guy started. This is just monofilament fishing line. What I do is I like to hang up either a bird wing, say like a duck wing or some random bird that you may have harvested. And uh, if you don't have a bird wing, you can even use aluminum foil. And that's actually what I used on these last few sets because I didn't have any birds. This kind of just snuck up on me. The farmer asked me to go set some traps on his land. So aluminum foil is all I had on, off hand. So that's the other thing that I bring. I don't know if it really matters a whole lot, but one thing I like to do is I fold it up in a, I like to fold it up flat like this and I'll pinch it in the middle. And this is where I'll tie it directly above my trap. And I always keep this kind of out flat or I'll bend them down a little bit. It almost kind of like mimics a bird. Uh, remember when you're targeting bobcats, which is what I'm mostly after, um, this will catch the wind and it'll spin. And I mean, this thing shines forever. So I mean, a bobcat can see that thing for 500 yards away. And it's basically just to get their attention. Although I will say this, I like to hang this about waist high. You know, however high I feel like a bobcat might actually reach up and just, and they, may, they might actually play with this. I haven't set a trail camera up to actually watch one swing at this. They usually go in at the bait when they get caught. But um, I actually take, say like if I use, uh, like I've been using the last couple of days, I've been using little strips of elk meat. I can actually dip this in my bait bag and get a little bit of blood on it so that say a varmint goes into my trap and steals the bait and leaves and he doesn't get it and he doesn't set the trap off. Well, this thing is still sitting up above the trap and it's got a blood smell to it and it gets their uh, bobcats uh, visual, you know, it catches their eye and they come over and check it out. So moving right along, you, a lot of guys, 
they you know everybody kind of uses their own thing this is just a uh, just a plain old coffee filter and I actually cut them down a little bit smaller so they just fit perfectly over the trap when the jaws of the trap are open all this does is just protect the uh, pan of the trap so that when you sift your dirt and put dirt on top of this and cover it up um, you don't get dirt underneath your pan so if you get dirt underneath your pan when they go step on that it's obviously not going to set off a uh, funny story on that a friend of mine took me out to a place of his and I was catching a lot of cats that year I was doing really good and he took me out and he's like, man, I can't catch no cats. Come see what I'm doing. You know, see how I had my sets. Well, he had his sets. He didn't have any type of pan covers whatsoever and he was dumping dirt in there and I watched him actually do one. I let him do the whole thing right in front of me. And of course, you know, later I showed him the pan covers because he was getting dirt underneath some of his pans and you could actually take a stick and push down on the pan and it wouldn't even hardly fire because of all the dirt that was underneath the pan. So you can use uh, coffee filters. I've used material off of shirts, which again, if you're trying to catch coyotes, that's, that might be a little bit of a no-no because you don't think you can ever get that smell off of your clothes. Uh, you can use uh, Ziploc bags, things like that. So anyway, that's my pan cover. And then uh, obviously you just want to try to keep this separate from your trap so it doesn't make your trap smell. But um, any kind of bait, guys. This is elk meat. You can use duck, rabbit, birds. I mean, just about anything that you have around the house. Like I said, this is for beginners, so I'm not going to go into the, the coyote urines and the bobcat urines and all this different things and all the stuff you can buy online. Just get you any old little critter or varmint that you're legally able to take, get it, get some meat off of it. You can actually sc scatter feathers around your traps too. It also looks like a bird or something might have been uh, caught inside that area, so it also makes a bobcat might want to commit a little bit more. So that's the bait. Um, this is what I just had laying around the house, just a kid's minnow net. What I use this for is once I've set my trap and it's bedded in the ground good, I'll get the driest dirt I can find and put in here and I just sift this over the top of that coffee filter and that gives me a good flat smooth dirt on top of the pan and then I can sm uh, smooth that up. So that what that really does is it keeps you from getting big rocks and things underneath your pan. Um, don't ever set your traps, that's, don't ever set your traps and use wet dirt. I've had an issue when I very first started trapping. I just grab whatever dirt was around me and if you had a recent rain it, the, the soil might be just a little bit moist and if you're not getting down below freezing that's okay but if it's getting down below freezing every night well what happens is your trap actually freezes up and again that pan will, is very hard to set off. Uh, the last thing this seems kind of silly it's just a stick um, you can make one you can use a piece of wire or what have you but I just use this after I sift my dirt and I get it over top of the pan. I just use this stick to kind of smooth it out. And you'll, it's kind of weird, but you'll ask any trapper out there and they have their own special stick. I just like this one. It's got that curve on the end. So when I hold it, I can keep it flat with the ground and smooth the ground up. So, Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how I do a trap here. I cut through the part of um, building up the, the wall and the backing here. I'll kind of show you what I did. So basically... Uh, I'm at a bridge where I found a lot of bobcat tracks. There's trails all over the place in here. I'm sorry for the background noise. There's a main highway right here. But anyhow, this had already had a, quite a bit of driftwood built up against the, this uh, railroad piling. So I just kind of built it up a little bit on each side here so that basically it's just easier for a bobcat to come in this direction. And uh, that's really it. That's the only part I cut by. So I'm going to get with it. I'm going to go ahead and cut my hole out here. And like I said in the other video... A lot of people put it like 14 inches, 12 inches, 16 inches, uh, the trap actually from the back of the where the meat will be. But I like to set it way far back. That way that bobcat has to go by the trap, go in, get the meat, might turn around, back up, what have you. So you, you quadruple your chances of catching a cat. So I think that's pretty key. But anyway, I'm going to stick this on my head and I'm going to move on with the process. Alrighty, so... Throw the gloves on here. Like I said, I'm next to a highway, so there's gonna be some traffic. Get everything out that I know I'll need, including a trap here. So I'm going to start with the claw hammer, and I don't have any particular distance here. I'm just gonna guess, I just know if I set the trap about here, that cat, if his front paw was here, his head would only be here. So if I put the meat clear back here, he's going to have to go past this trap a ways and come. If he gets the meat, he's going to have to get it and come back out and do all that without getting caught. So I'm going to dig a shallow little hole here. I'm going to say on average, on average, these holes that I dig for these 
uh, leg hold traps are only about two and a half, three inches maybe. I've dug a little bit more off of that wall to make it flat. I don't like my trap to be at an angle. I want it to be as flat as possible. I don't mind a little mud being in the bottom for me to plant the trap, but I'm gonna make for sure that I got super dry sand or dirt to put on over this. So here goes the rebar. So I use this rebar here. I use this rebar to drive the anchor in the ground. I like to put the anchor off kind of to the side. And I know this one's gonna go pretty deep because this ground is soft, super soft. That might actually be an issue. <clears throat> Boy, I don't, I don't think a cat can pull that out. Open it and get it to about that position. But getting, I might be able to get it. I might make a liar out of myself here. Clean that tip of that trigger off. Okay, push that guy down, lift the pan up. All right, I did do it by hand. Normally I have to do that with my feet. These are some of the strongest traps I've ever used. So anyhow. All right, I'm gonna embed that down in the ground pretty good. I'm gonna put some mud around the edges here. You don't want that trap to move at all. Now, I've got it bedded pretty good. I'm gonna set this trigger here. Click, alrighty. So that dude is ready to go. Flip that back over. Make sure this thing is good and solid in the ground. And then I'll put real dry sand around it on the inside. Once I feel like I've got it bedded pretty solid in the ground with no obstructions. And I never pack it in around these springs here. These levers here is what jump up and close the jaws. Well, yeah, that, that's fairly solid. Once I get sand over the top of that, It'll be pretty well ready to roll. Now I got me some sand. Now I'm gonna take one of these. I actually have one already made here. Here's one of my coffee filters. I'm gonna place the coffee filter over the top of that. I got my little magic stick here. I like to just give it exactly where I want it without it going off. Okay. And on comes the sand. I'm gonna sand this in real good. I always put more dirt on top of the trap than what I will use in the end result. And I'll show you why. Because I move a lot of that dirt around. Okay. Now I'll take my favorite stick here. And I will clean it up a little bit here on both sides. I like to get it down not to where I can see the jaws and I can build sand right back up on top of it. So I'm gonna get, keep moving on down where I can get all the way to where I can see the jaws or the pan. Try to keep all this smooth. I don't want it to look unnatural. I don't want it to be a big giant hole or a big hump either. Okay, so there you can see my coffee filter there. Okay, so there's my jaws. So one thing I do here I can see the jaws of the trap. One more thing I do here. See, there's the jaws. So what I'll do is I'll take a couple small sticks. Let me grab a couple real fast. Something like, I'll just use these weeds for now just for showing you what I'm doing. Then I'll fix it up a little more later. So anyway, I'll take a stick like this right here. Now make sure it's on the outside of the jaws. And I'm going to push it in. Well, if it'll stand up for me. I'm gonna push it in at an angle. and push it over here to the side, like so. Now that tells me exactly where the trap is. And what that also does is it makes the bobcat go, or whatever you're trapping, go exactly where I want it. Now I'm gonna build up a little bit more on each side right here to make sure that the bobcat or whatever animal I'm after won't come in on the sides. I'll just build this up a little bit more and that tells me exactly where the trap is. 
So I'm gonna cover them jaws right back up, get some off of that side. I don't want no white showing. That'd be kind of unnatural looking, obviously. All righty. And that to me is a, just about a perfect set. So cat can't see where the trap is. It can be set off pretty easily. I'm going to add a few sticks right here on each side to kind of coax him to go exactly where I want him. I'm gonna get one more piece of uh, stick here, I'll show you. Let me go get one more stick from my bait on my bait stick. And I'm gonna place it way back in here in the back of this trap. Make sure you don't set your trap off, obviously. But I'm gonna put that way in the back where it's hard for it to get to. That way that thing has to come in here, get it, and come all the way back out. got a bird here I found dead in my grill I actually hit it going down the highway anyway I'm gonna scatter some feathers in there that way if something does take the bait the bait it'll still have feathers in the back sometimes a varmint or something will come in here and take your meat which sucks but if I have the feathers in the back of here uh, it might be just enough to get a bobcat to go ahead and come on in here and take a take a look around something else I'll do I'll take some of that blood just kind of get that smell back in the back of this trap. For one, that covers up my human scent. And also, like I said a while ago, if the if a varmint comes and gets that meat before the bobcat comes, or coyote or whatever you're targeting, if another varmint comes in here and takes that meat, that gives it something else to look forward to to coax it to go on into the trap. So basically that was about a that took me about eleven minutes. Uh, to film that, which I cut out probably, took me probably about 10 or 15 minutes to build up the sides. I know a lot of guys think I go a little excessive on the uh, building up the, the walls of, of where I want to try to coax my bobcat. But I don't, I don't want to do all this work and a bobcat just come in here on the side and just reach over and grab the meat and leave. I mean, I want that thing to have to walk right here. So I'm actually, as soon as I cut this video, I'm going to build it up a little bit more on each side. So... That is how I set a trap. Hopefully that can help you when you go set a trap for your first time or maybe you're advanced and already know a little bit of this stuff. Maybe this is just kind of a refresher, maybe give you some other ideas that you haven't thought about because I'm fairly new to this. I mean, I've, I've been doing it for a few years, but I got to where I catch quite a few and I just wanted to spread the knowledge. So um, there you go. Okay, heading out to check the trap line this morning. I'm on trap number one. Uh, I would say this is the actual first day. Yesterday I ran the line yesterday, but so I came and ran this trap line yesterday, but I'd only set four traps and uh, caught a coon in the very first trap and the other three didn't have anything in them. Uh, got a few more traps set. I believe I've got eight out now. And uh, I'm at the first trap and I can see some ears poking over. So I don't know if it's a coon or a bobcat, so let's see. Just another coon. Coon number two in the same trap. Coons ain't hardly worth anything, but uh, I know they've they've been detrimental on the turkey population, so I'm happy to get them out of here. So I'll get this coon out of here, and we'll move on to trap number two. Okay, so I made it to trap number two, and it uh, looks like nothing has gotten in here. One thing I was going to add, the only thing I really ever carry with me when I'm running my traps is a 22 or whatever gun you want to use to expire your animals and uh, just a bag of trap meat this is just elk meat but uh come up here on trap two i'm not seeing any varmint tracks no scratch no new scratches uh meat still on the back of there so what i'll do is i'll freshen this side up a little bit i'll uh put a new piece of bait i'll do it with gloves on of course but anyway i'll rebate this one dust it up a little bit and uh move on but uh i can already tell over here on trap three looks like i got a stinking porcupine so i need to look in the regulations and see if you're if you're able to kill those or i gotta look in the regulations on the porcupine deal i'm not sure on that deal but i'm pretty sure i got a porcupine okay trap number three it does have a porcupine in it like i thought i looked in the regulations i can't find anything about it so i'm assuming you're not supposed to kill them so I'm gonna try to figure out how to get this stupid thing out of here. It's a huge one too. Check this out. That is a monster porcupine. He does not want me 
need to see his head at all. Okay, here goes nothing. All right, buddy. Yeah, I, I see ya. I see ya. I don't know how in the world I'm gonna get this thing out of here. Oop. I'm building it just like that right there. Gosh, dog it, I got one side to release and not the other. Freedom. His leg looks fine, so he'll be fine. Hopefully, don't get back in my stinking trap. Okay, I just got here to trap number four, and something looks kind of odd. That's why I was going to show you guys. So I'm looking at these little bitty tracks. I'm I'm pretty sure this was an armadillo. It kind of uncovered the coffee filter there. It dug a little hole in the back of the trap there. It didn't even touch the bait. So I'm going to freshen this one up. I'm going to dust it up a little bit, put a new fresh piece of bait, and uh, move on. <clears throat> These varmints are killing me. So I just came up to trap number five here, and I checked this trap yesterday. It was one of the three that I set, or four that I set the first day. And um, something has came in here and taken the bait for a second day in a row and did not get uh, did not get caught so I'm actually going to I can't really tell by the tracks I can't tell if it's another possum or raccoon or what it is um, but anyhow what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the trap I'm gonna set it off on purpose and then I'm going to reset it I'm gonna get a little bit more dry dirt I'm wondering if maybe the trap pan might be freezing up because I like to set mine kind of hair triggered I like to catch anything and everything that'll step on a trap uh, I just don't like thieves I'd rather catch something and get it out of here and uh, and then move on to bigger and better things so anyhow I'm gonna set this trap off and then we'll move on with uh, rebaiting it so take a stick here and set it off this also gives me an opportunity to see how hard it is to set it off well I didn't have to push very hard so whatever is coming in here is pretty small animal so I'm gonna get this reset and rebated and move on to the last two traps okay trap number six back there was right beside the road there was nothing in it I didn't film anything there I'm literally on trap number seven on uh, day number two and I'm pretty sure I got a cat I'm gonna be disappointed if it's a coon but I just looked at the scope and I think I can see gray hair this is a what I call a den set. It was a natural. What do I have? Oh yeah, bobcat. Heck yeah, got a good cat. All right, let's go down here and take a look at it. Yes, thank you, Lord. I was just in here thinking. Oh, he's mad. Oh, that's a pretty good sized cat too. Good sized cat. Yeah, so these guys, these guys called me about a cat getting their goats. There's a goat pen right up here, not 400 yards from where I'm standing. And uh, here's a good sized cat. I'm sure it's probably one that could be stealing those baby goats. But uh, I'm gonna get this cat out of this trap and uh, reset it and I'll show you a little bit closer up of the bobcat here. That's really about it. Um, that's just the basics on how to trap animals. Um, obviously, I targeted a bobcat. I caught a bobcat today here on my second day on the trap line. I set four traps out the first day. It's all I had time to set out. Uh, I caught a raccoon only. I set three more to, uh, yesterday, so I had seven traps set out. I went and I had a porcupine in one I had to let go. I caught another coon today, which I caught a coon yesterday. And literally on my seventh trap I checked today, there was the uh, cat, and we think he's been uh, raiding a, a baby goat pen just a quarter mile down the road from where I caught him. So, 
that is all there really is guys trapping can be a lot of fun you can get your neighbors involved you can get take your kids your wife whoever and uh that's why i encourage everybody to get get somebody and take them with you you know because they might not have the opportunity to get in the outdoors so anyway as always thank god for everything you got guys if it wasn't for god we wouldn't have anything i thank him every day for my blessings and thank you for watching full circle outdoors and that is a how-to on how to catch bobcats see you on the next one